the borders of the land, they begin where the river and the stream are. That's the widest base of my land, around about 200 meters. And then it starts, as we go further up, it starts to taper to a point at the very, at the very top of the land, up here through the pines. Um, so it gets thinner as it goes up. The size of the land is 1.4 hectares and um, I find, personally I find that is more than enough to work with. Um, people often go thinking that they need more, maybe because they have the desire to have space between them and neighbours, but um, any more than that and it's a lot to work with. 1.4 hectares is absolutely perfect for me. I'm Adam and I'm from the UK. Uh, I'm here in Portugal, central Portugal, working on a project which I started about a year ago. Um, to build a school of nature. A school of nature in which people learn how to live within nature. So our principal activity is teaching people with the skills and knowledge of all sorts of things to do with building, um, growing vegetables, growing, uh, growing trees, and also being able to reforest the area to protect against things like wildfire as well as harvesting water. Since I first bought the land, I've had a string of around about 35 volunteers come through this place and um, all have brought their own kind of uniqueness, skills, um, enthusiasm, um, everywhere from cooking in the kitchen to planting trees and different kind of knowledges and perhaps like wild foraging was also a very popular thing that people have brought with them. Um, and it's, it's been the, the, the kind of people that I've had here have been very diverse. Um, very embracing of living in a basic way within this beautiful spot in central Portugal. It was like five months I stayed here from 1st of January, like New Year's, until May. <laughs> so yeah. How was it? What did you do? Well, we built a cabin just near Adam. It was a big project. It was nice. Then we also did um, yoga platforms. At the beginning of it, we did the food forest, the garden. We did some other buildings. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things we did. We had a lot of startups, and now we're picking the fruits of it. Like now we have vegetables. It's like amazing. Like ah. yeah, it's really great. I make, I make two per day, so I've been here for for five I days. Did, it's impossible. I did five. Yeah, exactly. So you so, did at least one. Yeah. So twelve. Uh, where did you come from? Uh, Portugal. Uh, but I was living uh, in Holland for uh, twelve years. What were you doing there? Uh, I was working in a. Uh, in a, as a chef, uh, in a fine dining uh, restaurant, uh, well, learned a lot, uh, and uh, a lot of sweat, a lot of blood, a lot of tears <laughs> was involved. In but, the kitchen or here? Huh? In the kitchen or here? In the kitchen and here as well. Right? <laughs> More smile here. Yeah, exactly. And less but, stress as well, you know? I cook here, uh, and I, I, I love it. You know, it's just a, a perfect harmony with nature to uh, to be creative uh, with what you have um, around you. And I think that's the ultimate creativity for a chef. You know, to be challenged by that because you're always used to uh, to be working with the. Uh, most uh, high-end equipment uh, with uh, a lot of utensils and uh, here you just like do what you with what you have you know you do what you can with what you have so it's uh, yeah, great to, uh, to be challenged in that way you know half bucket what do you call this technique adam uh what do i call this technique it's Riding the donkey? Yes, riding the, is the, uh, <laughs> it's uh, taming the wild steed to the, to a useful beast. Riding the donkey.
Normally we use uh, three parts of uh, herd that we use the bucket and then we use a little bit of lime limestone that is gonna help to set once in the bag and then water we just keep pouring until we have a consistency where we can pick a amount and then we can kind of form a bowl without hurt crumbling too much so it's still slightly dry we're gonna need a little bit of extra and then a good amount of mixing and then we're gonna prepare new buckets for the new bags and we're gonna keep uh, uh, layering how long have you been doing this uh two weeks and we have we have four le um, levels so far and we're gonna reach five and then we're gonna start using the smaller bag so it's gonna be faster uh, but yeah it's a great warm up in the morning <laughs> right yeah, it's the best way to start the morning first year was really um, about creating temporary habitation, temporary solutions for people to be able to um, stay comfortably on the land and, and work. Um, we've got a van here which is a converted uh, Renault traffic, that's got a green roof on it. We've got, um, I've made some parking spaces for people to sleep in their camper vans. We've got a tiny caravan here. This is our solar setup where we charge our devices very simple just one panel linked up to a car battery and it's got a converter to help convert it into usable energy Did you get enough out of that? You get loads I actually surprisingly I get enough out of this to um, power a 12 volt solar pump which goes down into the well pumps water up and it goes up following this pipe here goes up into a tank that's on the hill that then tank, we turn a tap and it's a drip irrigation system for the garden basically over here. But also it, um, we needed to create the height for the, um, we needed to create enough height for the tank in order for it to also feed the, the trees down in the, uh, in, in the food forest. So that one panel gives you enough for the pump and the devices. Yeah, and also uh, a pneumatic drill which we uh, used to carve out the drainage trench because um, as we started digging we realized we were hitting rock so we needed a pneumatic drill to um, to carve out the drainage trench in order to start this build. At the moment we get water from the well for washing and cleaning, cleaning things. Um, I also go to the local fountain um, to get spring water but further down the line I also want to create a system where we filter our water from the well. Um, using a system of buckets and various sand, charcoal and things like that. Volunteer handbook. Um, on, a, on a daily basis we need to do things that help keep the whole project ticking and running. Um, a lot of lot off-grid life is based around routine and the practice of routine and things like fetching water, preparing firewood, um, cleaning up you can imagine being in an off-grid environment, it's not that clean. Well, just doing the basics of being able to keep things nice and clean. Uh, it, just, it just makes things tick a little bit smoother, run a little bit smoother. So um, I prepared this book for um, this booklet for everyone. That's Dow Valley, that's our little logo. Um, and I'll be taking people through the dailies checklist today. And at the moment, we're still working on the summer's dailies checklist. So, righty, um, the trees need a good soaking, One, um, depending on what type of tree it is, 3 to 30 days. We've got, a, um, we've got a composting system in which we combine the use of some kitchen vegetable scraps, um, some organic matter from the area, just cutting down some of these, this bracken and ferns, and it's a way in which we're using it to dispose of our, um, toilet, our dry toilet waste. So the wood chip and the feces and the toilet paper that goes into the toilet we're placing into this compost cage which uh, is both permeable for rain but also ventilated um, and we place the bracken and the organic uh, vegetation around the sides we create a hole which we, we then fill with the toilet waste the kitchen uh, the, the waste from the toilet 
and the idea is that the rain can fall on it the air can access it and the organic matter will help keep the flies away project's going really well i couldn't be happier i've got a team of um, volunteers at the moment we're working on a building project uh, at the moment to build a kitchen using a wonderful building technique called super adobe and it's it's going so smoothly i've got a it's, uh, collected together a group of great individuals who are all very very keen on learning how to build with this method and um, and I couldn't be happier. So we are working on the top of the arches so me and another volunteer basically made all of these wooden kind of formworks so the idea is that when you lay the Super Adobe bag on top you basically take out the formwork and then it forms this kind of doorway this opening so what I'm working on this morning is for the top of the arch we think that in order for the weight on top of it not to sort of collapse in we need these really solid kind of arch waveforms so if you imagine the kind of negative space in this creates a brick you basically have sort of nine of these going over the top of one of those arches and the idea is to basically make it more sort of lime or cement. And then when you connect all of these together, it would make like a classical sort of Roman arch. And then you lay the bag on top of it and then it sort of compresses it down. But yeah, I've been working on this this morning and then I think later on I'll help with the bags, which is the kind of main, that's the main kind of labor intensive thing. So yeah, it's been good. It's been How fun. long have you been here? Uh, so I've been here for three weeks, it's actually my last day tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's been pretty spectacular. I'm an architect back home, so it's really good to kind of, I don't know, to actually kind of put those sort of theoretical things and sort of practical experience. And obviously the best thing about this is that you, we all sort of sit around and Adam has a design and then we kind of talk it through. And then whatever kind of ideas that you have, whether that's sort of creative or whatever, everyone's welcome to sort of put in their input. And then you go and do it. Like there's no sort of separation between, you know, designing something and then going and doing it. So what are we doing today? Let's go and you know, see how that works. So it's so refreshing to kind of see that, that kind of immediacy that you get with this kind of construction. Um, yeah, I'll be sad to leave. It's been, it's been pretty amazing. So you'll be back again? Yeah, I actually, I think my current plan is I'm going to Switzerland for a week and then I think I'm just coming straight back here. Adobe is like an ancient technique of um, using using bricks that have been compressed, uh, earth compressed into brick-like forms, um, and then laid together to create a building. Um, Super W is a modernization of that method where we use sacks to fill fill the sacks with earth, and then we compress the sacks down into very long-like bricks that are layered and stacked up upon one another. Um, and it was devised by an Iranian architect called Nader Khalili whose inspiration was to provide every man and woman on this planet with the ability to create their own shelter, to build their own shelter simply using the materials that they have around them. This technique is very labor intensive, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of repetition, it's very inspiring, very empowering and at the same time it's also very labor intensive so you need a strong um, and uh, people with a lot of attention to detail and commitment to the project. But that's what we've got here. I'm very lucky to have 11 people, 11 volunteers helping me out with this. We basically fill up with sand and, uh, and stones and we put like a big pipe, so it's just going to be the drainage pipe and then we start uh, slowly to lie down all the bags. Uh, but even this procedure, adding some plastic to help out uh, uh, um, the water to don't come in is took like quite three four days right. just to do that um, so yeah but it was challenging yeah. things are going to start moving up a lot quicker than what they were the volume of this foundation bag um, is about 40% more than the volume of the bag that's going to go on top of it that's slightly thinner so um, yeah uh, we, we should see a lot of progress now and the next thing we're going to put in is the windows so um, when, when we probably added probably two more layers of this thinner bag and we're going to see the windows go in. My name is Carlo Gloria, um, we're, we're cooking at the moment <laughs> for breakfast.
and um, yeah what, what do we do normally I mean outside of the thing um, yeah so I lived in in UK in London uh, doing tax advisory sort of role um, which I've quit three about three four weeks ago <laughs> to do something like this yeah. Great. Is this kind of a shift you would like to make permanent or just something you want to come and experience? Well, that it's, it's a mixture of both. Um, to start with, I just kind of want to experience something new. And um, hopefully if I see something that I want to do, carry on more, then yeah, hopefully I could uh, get away from the city life and more towards the country sort of living, you know. Yeah. Have you worked on projects like this before? Um, yeah, so there was one work away prior to this. Um, which lasted for about three weeks as well and um, yeah it was good um, it's, it was also about permaculture um, working on lands doing some building works and um, yeah it's been great I've learned a lot you know <laughs> always like something new so after this I'm gonna cycle back to Lisbon um, that will take me about 11 to 12 days and then catch a plane to Bangkok um, and then from Bangkok, I'll take the train up to Chiang Mai, see my friends there for a month in December, and then do another bicycle tour between Bank. Uh, sorry, Chiang Mai, Bien Chan, um, what's this country again? Vietnam, <laughs> Cambodia, and then back to Bangkok, and then we'll see from there. Um, we'll see if I wanna go back to UK or <laughs> carry on. <laughs> so did you cycle here in Brompton? I did, yes, yes. Tell us about um, that. Yeah, it's been very tough. Um, as you, you know, some, some of your viewers may know, Brompton is great for city. Um, it's perfect for it, but when it comes to outdoor and more long distance, um, it is capable, but not the perfect bike for it. But to me, it's, it's more on, you know, doing it slow, having fun with it, you know. Uh, I'm not really in a rush to go into different places so to me Brompton's perfect. Um, I was here like two weeks ago and you filmed me before. Um, I went off to Switzerland and Germany with some friends in a car sort of drove back through and then went back to the UK for a week and then I wanted to come back here and finish off the Super Adobe building um, but apparently while I was away the whole two weeks I was away it just chucked it down with rain so that's not happening anymore but we've kind of moved on to the interior of the house. Uh, I'm an architect, so obviously it's quite interesting to work on a kind of housing renovation project as well as the eco build for the kitchen. Um, yeah, so at the moment we're working on sort of tanking or waterproofing the inside of that stone building. So this is a stone building, minus step. And we had loads of water coming in off of the hill. It all washed into this building. Um, and right now we're just securing the walls with sand and cement, filling all the holes, smoothing it off, and this means the waterproof tanking can do its, its job. So we're kind of creating a swimming pool, but rather than holding the water in, we're keeping the water out. Um, so we've probably used about two tons of sand, close to, close to three tons of uh, sand and cement and um, yeah we'll see how it works the problem is here we have minus 10 minus 15 in the winter so freezing's a, a problem and when water freezes it expands so that's the only thing that could hinder this we'll see what happens when the temperature drops that low but fingers crossed this is it this is good and um, we'll have a dry building for the winter I've been building on and off for 30 years. Uh, I've also been into meditation, shamanism, uh, altered states of consciousness, all that kind of stuff. So anything from Buddhism to breathing techniques to cold water swimming to psychedelic retreats, anything. I, I, I really love the subject and I've been doing it for, for a while. But I don't love building so much so I can take my skills from the UK, transfer them over here, and hopefully can really build something, you know, special, magical, like a dream come true.